Knife crime is a crime involving an object with a blade or sharp instrument. It is a criminal offence to be in possession of an offensive weapon, both in public and private. Some definitions, such as a flick knife, have been amended to include modern designs. It is a criminal offence to possess in private any offensive weapon, including zombie knives, push daggers, curved swords, stealth knives, disguised knives, knuckle dusters, belt buckle knives, sword sticks and hand or foot claws. Possessing a weapon, the maximum sentence is currently four years custody. If the person committed the same offence before, they face a minimum of at least six months custody. Threatening with a weapon, the minimum sentence is six months and the maximum is four years custody. Sentences are calculated by an assessment of culpability and harm. Culpability means how responsible the offender was for the offence. Harm is a measure of damage caused or risk to the victim or victims. Aggravating factors may increase the severity of the sentence. Examples include motivated by hostility based on race, religion, disability, sexual orientation or identity, committed as part of a group or committed under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Mitigating factors may decrease severity of sentence. Examples include where the person lacks previous or relevant convictions, has a serious urgent medical condition, is young or lacks maturity, has a mental disorder or learning disability, or has cooperated with the police. If the defendant enters a guilty plea, they may also receive a reduced sentence. But remember, carrying a knife means you are more likely to use it, or have it used against you. Personal views or pressure from anyone never justify using a knife against another human being. Everyone known to the user or victim faces some kind of life sentence afterwards, including families and loved ones. Nothing is worth that. Too late to debate when the exploiters are done. A parent tries, a mother cries, as we lose our daughters and sons. Too late for their fate when the grooming is done. The knife is dabbed, a child is stabbed, as we lose our daughters and sons. A parent's worst nightmare too common to track. Their child goes out and never comes back. Too late a debate around knife crime is found, when a stolen child lies in the ground. Some even blame parents for what comes, despite their pleas to save daughters and sons. Parents try to stop the grooming they see, but their child is rewired by fake reality. Dealers play with kids' lives like they are toys, and rewire once gifted, girls and boys. Too late to debate when the exploiters are done, a parent tries, a mother cries, as we lose our daughters and sons. Too late for their fate when the grooming is done The knife is dabbed, a child is stabbed As we lose our daughters and sons Missing so often despite parents' care Frantic worry and fear give way to despair Some children come home after days unseen Dishevelled and anxious, can't say where they've been Parents try to keep children as safe as can be But dealers convinced they are new family Children not seeing they are being used Small gifts or some cash leave them confused Free drugs turned into a forever debt Kids pay a price they do not understand yet Too late to debate when the exploiters are done 
A parent tries, a mother cries as we lose our daughters and sons. Too late for their fate when the grooming is done. The knife is dabbed, a child is stabbed as we lose our daughters and sons. If a child is stopped in the community, are they truly seen for their vulnerability? A loved child changed by deception then fear. Parents try and try to hold their child near. Coercion and pressures are quickly built to turn kids from families through fear and through guilt. With imposed drug debts to control their silence, adding torture, branding and sexual violence. Exploiters rewire young minds to hurt each other. When boys stab boys, the upset adds to their cover. Too late to debate when the exploiters are done. A parent tries, a mother cries as we lose our daughters and sons. Too late for their fate when the grooming is done. The knife is dabbed, a child is stabbed as we lose our daughters and sons. Exploiters start by acting big but nice, twisting innocent minds for a hidden price. Crisp, fresh trainers for children's feet, grooming gifts and words are sickly sweet. Parents left distraught time after time, their innocent child groomed into crime. Seven out of ten stabbed with their own knife. Please educate and support to prevent that life. A stabbed youth mourned, but replaced rapidly. Another deceived child will go happily. A parent's nightmare too common to track. Their child goes out and never comes back. Another child stabbed, bleeding out on display. Kids killing kids, getting younger each day. The insensitive film it, then hurry to post. No thought for families left hurting the most. Stabbings become more mindless somehow. 
Less about cash, more about emotions now. Stabbed because of a row over emojis online. Or killed for a wrong look from some other time. Stabbed for revenge after being called out. A needless attack born through shame and doubt. Kids are immersed in false ways of competing. As clips online advocate murder and beating. Insults, bullying, resentments and beef. A perfect storm so kids normalise grief. Kids feeling rejected, belittled or shamed. Struggling to process street anger and pain. Words boil with pressure, becoming infected. Anger and fear are soon misdirected. Running away, laughing after stabbing someone. Their innocence lost when the rewiring began. Influenced kids led to turn on each other. As tragedy is the reality they rush to discover. Structural inequality for those without wealth. Poor support, poverty and mental ill health. Growing up feeling judged, unheard and unspoken. As exploiters swoop in to claim the broken. Anxiety in society as animosity fuels violence. Our humanity and morality must not let us stay silent. One son. Zack ran a while before he even knew. The knife had cut his artery too. Alone in an alley, bleeding out on the floor. Disbelief and shock until he was no more. Beside litter and bins laid his child and son. Any future and prospects stolen and gone. Zack was well liked and great at sports. Until groomers invaded his innocent thoughts. Zack had been snared through subtle tricks. Those dealers offered a false lifestyle and fix. Incentives and status were dangled as bait. So Zack would run drugs across an estate. Parents unsupported when Zack started to slip. They pleaded for help away from that grip. But Zack went missing from home and school. So authorities thought he was playing the fool. In reality, Zack had been groomed and rewired. Seduced by drugs they said he desired. He was told he better not lose any drugs. Or allow himself to be belittled by thugs. They passed him a knife to protect the deals. Despite how anxious this made Zack feel. That night arrived when he was running the gear. In a different area he travelled in fear A friend of a friend vexed because he was there So Zack pulled his knife to make them beware He didn't want to use it but pressure kicked in And the other youth swiped it away from him Next that youth felt anger and fear And felt pressure from other people near he used the knife to jab at Zack's thigh Hoping Zack would leave it and go on by Unknown to all the damage was done And loving parents lose more than one son Splash, dipped, burst or stabbed Call it whatever it ends on a slab. Stabbed near home to cause bigger fuss. 
or heading to school on a packed bus. A machete is drawn, ready to hack. A blade is pulled from the waist at the back. The bigger the better to end who they see. Faces are covered where there's CCTV. Stashed by a bench near a tower block. Or tucked in sleeves, small bags or a sock. And for what? Really for what? To end another child so they get got? Why is such coldness inside children's heads? Their mindsets rewired to add to the dead. A child stabs a child with no shaking hand, rewired to think the reason will stand. An attacked child staggers, then falls bleeding. Attackers stroll off laughing whilst leaving. Beef is inflamed over the tiniest matter. Jealousy, funny looks or online patter. He said or she said or he stole my bike. Or abject comments the victim had liked. Poverty coupled with little support. False lifestyles steal kids, leaving parents distraught. Carrying for protection from each other. Misplaced fear and anger thrust death into another. Mum wears a t-shirt with her son's pick and the slogan. As they bury her child, more futures are stolen. There can be no true protection without supportive extrication. Prevention and education need national dedication. Parents are left devastated each and every day as exploiters twist the knife to coax their kids away. It's Friday night and friends, Siobhan, Ellie, Luke, Jamie and Mo meet in the local park as usual to hang out. They all met through school and live within the same local area. They all love listening to music and Jamie loves to share his own rap songs. So most nights they meet at the park. Jamie is 14 years old and is struggling at school. He's also struggling with his parents and thinks that nobody understands how he's feeling. Luke is aged 10 and thinks hanging out with the older guys is cool, has two sisters and one brother. Siobhan is 15 years old and lives with her mum and stepdad. Siobhan struggles to make friends and fit in with groups at school. Mo is 16 and an only child whose parents separated when he was a young child. Mo performs well at school with top grades and his father is a lawyer. Ellie's 15, from a large family with two sisters and three brothers who all live with their mum. Ellie's dad sadly passed away when she was just 10 years old. The friends are sharing stories and Jamie stands up to recite his new rap poem. Siobhan spots someone in the distance who looks like he's coming towards them. Any of you got any weed? No, none of us have ever tried it. Who are you and where are you from anyway? I'm Steve. I've just moved up from South Town with my job. What's weed? Cannabis, of course, Luke. What do you do for work, Steve? I travel around delivering parcels. It pays a cool amount of dough. They chat for some time about music, different artists, films and their home lives. Steve invites them back to his flat that is situated just near the park. As they arrive, there are two other guys in the flat who are smoking too. 
What's that smell? What are you smoking? Cannabis. It's harmless and can give you such a buzz. Do you fancy trying some? Yeah, I do. It's not long before they all try to see what it's like. How do you make money in your job? Is it demanding? No, not at all. I meet my boss, we call him Big Man, and he gives me an address for me to deliver my parcels. I even have my own dedicated phone line that I don't share with my family. Just my work family. It's brilliant, and we look out for one another. We're like family. We chat and support one another and hang out after school all the time. <laughs> I should introduce you to more of my work family. You won't find anyone better. Well, look at your watch. That's mint. Where'd you get that from? Oh, this. My mate sells them. It's a copy, but I'll be able to afford the genuine article soon. That's cool. I wish I could earn a lot of money. My mum really struggles. Hey, why don't you join us? You'll be earning in no time. I tell you what, I'll get you all one of these copies from my mate. They have a street value of 2k, and there will be plenty more where this comes from. Siobhan and Ellie spend a lot of time chatting to the other guys in the flat, and they get on really well. Count us in two! How about you two? Jamie and Luke, you in? If it means we can earn our own money, sounds cool to us. Cool. Okay then, I have a plan. We need to take a couple of packages to two different places in Manchester and Leeds, and then all meet back near Leeds Station. There's a cafe called Runners on the corner of County Street. Siobhan and Luke, if you both get the train to Manchester and jump into a taxi to this address for 1.30pm, you'll be met by Johnny and Dylan from London, who will take the packages from you. What's in the package? Hmm. Cocaine. Here is your dedicated phone line. Johnny will text you. Oh, what if they get stopped by the police? <laughs> no chance, mate. That's why we're organising you a taxi from the station. It's daytime. They'll be fine. I've been doing this for the past 12 months with no problems. What about the rest of us? What do we all get? <laughs> 500 quid each. Wow. That's an amazing amount of money. I'm beginning to like this even more. <laughs> Good. I would like you and Jamie then to take the train to Leeds and deliver your packages to an address that will be texted to you. Or someone will call you. I think they're staying in a guest house. When do we get paid? At the Runners Cafe on County Street afterwards. I won't be there, but you will be looked after by our bagman who transports the cash. Sir... So who do we meet and what am I supposed to do? You keep this phone on you and we'll let you know what time to meet at the cafe. Siobhan and Ellie can text you when they've arrived at the cafe. I also want you to take a small package to the cafe. It will be about 5.30pm and it will be busy with commuters so nobody will suspect anything. They sit and chat to go through their plans. On Monday, Siobhan, Ellie, Luke, Jamie and Mo all set off for school from their homes and make their way to Steve's flat. They all change out of their uniforms and collect their packages. Here you go. I bought you all a mix of new clothing for joining our family. Wow. How do you know our sizes? Thanks. You're part of my family now. I'm making me business to know. And to look after you. Siobhan and Luke set off to catch their train to Manchester. This is going to be so easy, Luke. They both sit listening to music on the train. Once they arrive in Manchester, they make their way to the taxi rank. Siobhan receives a message. They both get into the taxi and it takes them to their destination. Off you go then, just up those stairs. I'll wait for you. They walk up the stairs and meet another two of the family's gang members who both have knives visible in their hands. They open the package to check that the goods are in. Off you go then, job done. Siobhan and Luke get back into the taxi, head for the station and the train back to Leeds. That was a bit scary. Why are the knives? Maybe they didn't trust us as we haven't met them before. Anyway, we're all done. Let's look forward to our money. Ellie and Jamie are on the route to their destination in Leeds. They wait for their text message and get into their dedicated taxi. The driver, known as H, is quite chatty, which puts them both at ease, as they are both quite nervous. Here you go then. There's the house. 
Wait for your next message. A message then comes in telling them to go into the house. Come on, Jamie. What's wrong? I'm just a bit nervous. We're breaking the law, and if we get caught, there will be consequences. Don't be such a wimp. We only have to hand the package over and we're done. They enter the house and are greeted by a group of four males. Once again, they hand over the package. One of the males opens a package in front of them with a huge knife. Is this it? Where's all my plate? There should be more. That's all we were given. Ellie and Jamie are feeling very nervous. They can both see that some of the men are taking drugs. Wait there. I'm going to make a call to the big man. He leaves the room to make a call and returns. Go on, you're done. Go to your next call. They receive a text message from their driver who will take them back to Leeds Station. I didn't like that. I was so nervous. Me neither. Did you see the size of the knife? I picked one up on the way out, just in case. In case of what? Well, we have to go to the cafe yet. What if we don't get our money? What's the knife going to do? Protection, in case anyone has one. They arrive at Leeds Station and wait for a text. Ellie replies to the text. Our taxi driver is just there. Hide that knife properly or we will get stopped. There's Siobhan and Luke. Looks like they just got there too. They arrive at the cafe where Mo is sat waiting at a table and they all sit together. Three men walk in and sit near them and Mo receives a text. Mo texts back. He doesn't receive a reply. And Mo gets up to go and sit with the three men. I got your package here, but need payment for all of us who've done the work. Just hand it over. No, not until we receive some payment. One of the men stands up and threatens Mo. They start arguing, and another of the men throws a punch at Mo. Jamie pulls out the knife he took and walks over to the men, wielding it in front of himself. Stop! I'll use this! The first man also pulls out a knife and stabs Jamie in the leg. Call an ambulance! And they all run out of the cafe, where they're confronted by a taxi driver who was an undercover police officer. Nobody move. We have been following all of you. More police officers enter the cafe and arrest them all. The ambulance is here. Please, can I come with you and Jamie? Yes, you can come with me. Javorn is allowed to go with Jamie in the ambulance with another police officer called Kirsty. My leg hurts. Why were you carrying a knife? I thought it would help protect me. I would never have used it. If you hadn't taken the knife out, you may not have been stabbed. What's going to happen to us? My parents will be so angry with me. You are both under arrest and will be taken and questioned at the police station. We will then discuss a course of action for you. There will be a whole team involved, including youth offending services and social services. Mo, Luke and Ellie are all arrested and taken to the police station, along with the County Lines Drugs Gang, who had been under police surveillance for some time. The consequences of their actions have resulted in them all being arrested and taken to the police station for questioning. Instagram, 
and channels like YouTube Fueled by constant fee, facts are fuel, slapped to some abuse Present gang life is appealing to youngers in the area Parents oblivious to the groom is even more scary Root a problem, like in the home, like a tension Shout with gifts and splits, in the groom life attraction Pause bits of kids online, in the chapels with no trainers In a band of solid photo scouts, put themselves in danger With guns and weapons, stacks of bin piles hide Sucking new recruits through, glamorising lifestyle Smack from trap the mule, on a find a friend at the remote the monitor to the mill, look at him where they're at. No more clocks, can we lie? No more kids on the road, on the road. They need to live their lives, live their life. they need to protect their souls. For real, no more clocks, can we lie? No more no kids on the road, on the road. They need to live their lives, live their life. They need to protect their souls. For real, it's 13 in a strange flat missing from home. No heat for the draft, he had to sit with the phone He wished it wouldn't ring, cause it was two in the morning He was cold, he was fed up, so tired and yawning Looking at the door, just wanting to run out Trying to figure out a way that he could get home somehow But where would he go to, and who even missed him? Just another lost kid that has slipped through the system Maybe all he needs is some love and affection Somebody that can steer him in a better direction Now he's sat in a trap with a few wraps of crack A slave to his debt because his money was taxed Nobody saw the signs until he crossed county lines He started off with money, new clothes all the time This vulnerable kid is in a mixed up biz His carers are scared cause they don't know where he is No more clowns In his race, went out one day. Little did they know what was coming their way. When a man with a knife came out to Ash and demanded that he give him all of his cash. And Ash said no to so the man with the knife into Ash's throat. And all of his mates just stood and froze. Cause they didn't know where to go. There was no one around. It's 3 a.m. in the middle of the town. His mates just shout, Blaze! Ash is still on the ground. He takes his last breath as his hands drop down. The man runs away. No one just saw his face. Now no one's gonna have a trace of where he is or where he's gone. Later that day, there's a knock on the door just down Wall Street, number 20. As his mom swings open the door She's told the news and she breaks down on the floor She's so confused she don't know what to do no more She's lost her only son, her world and so much more Later on, Ash's mom gets the glass of drinks to rum She never asked for her son to end up like this He truly will be missed by many that knew him What the hell did a man have to do him? 
What the hell then am I not to do Ashes, mum goes to the shed She's got nothing left She just feels dread Her one and only son is dead And she feels like There's absolutely nothing left She locks the door Throws the key Makes a new surprise to see Her son again And she steps on the chair Blinded by her long hair She kicks a chair And all is silent In the background There are sirens No one should ever lose someone To something like this So please Put an end to knife crime now
take a second to see the world that we're living in All the hate and discrimination, a wicked game no one can win Now I don't know the answer, but what I see is wrong Something's got to change here, let's start it with this song Open your mind and close your eyes Quiet the thunder and you'll hear them cry Someone tell you go back to where you were coming from Or warned you Sunday best to have them tell you sir you don't belong Now I don't know your history but I can see your heart If you can see my heart too then maybe that's a start Open your mind and close your eyes Quiet the thunder and you'll hear them cry, cry, cry Sophie Lancaster, hey. Stephen Lawrence, hey. Anthony Walker, hey. Damalola Taylor. Hey. Open your mind and close your eyes. Quiet the thunder and you'll hear them cry. Don't let it spread the